I'm not quite sure what happened to this old shrimp tank. For the longest of time, every time I'd come home, the plants had just gone absolutely mental. And I'd have to chop, chop, chop them out. But for some reason, the plant growth is just stalled. Even the, the floating plants, they're not, they're not really picking up. They're not really going crazy. I'm not sure whether I just need to start again. It's a, it's an old tank. It's a few years old. Um, the shrimp population seems to be stagnant. Uh, I do take a lot of shrimp out of here and transplant them other places, you know, throw them in with a bigger fish, a bit of food, you know, this and that. But they just, the whole tank seems to have stalled. And this sort of happened, I don't know, a couple of months ago. You know, I've tried changing the plants up. This grass used to just take over the whole thing where there was no room to see in or anything. And just sort of stopped. The string algae's picking up, but it's not really too crazy either. So I've got the string algae, but it's not, the string algae's not really making any problems. I'm not really sure what these plants are called, but I'm gonna take a few of the long ones out and try transplanting them outside. But if anyone knows what they're actually called, I'll just call them the jungle looking ones. I've had, they started off from the same one plant. I bought one plant for a couple bucks and I've just cloned it and cloned it and cloned it. And at times I must've had about 60, 70 of these, you know, in my bigger tank, taking up the whole thing. Just keeps cloning. Same with the grass, just bought one, just bred it. Just kept breeding it. The little mini shrimp tape. That's getting the sort of growth that you'd expect. Every time I come back, it's just overgrown to the houses. And I've already cleaned out a lot of the floaties, but the floaties are growing strong. I pretty much use this tank here because it's set up so well. I take out all the floaties, just leave a couple, just to start off with, and I use that to replenish my other tanks. But this, this tank grows strong. I've never had any problems, no maintenance. All I do is put a couple bits of food in there every day and once a week do a small water change. Other than that, this tank just looks after itself. This tank, the sharks are starting to outgrow, which is a bit upsetting. So I don't really have anything bigger for them. But this tank's pretty much self-sufficient. I mean, I say that, that's kind of not true. I do have to weed out. The plants grow strong and thick in there. Someone seems to buzz cut them and always end up with these floating bits. It does not take very long, like a day at most, for this to build up. They just like to destroy them. But they're happy. There's a lot more critters in here than you might think. You just can't see them all. It's quite a healthy shrimp population in here as well. Uh, it's not huge, it's not like, say, a shrimp tank, but they're in there. The more you look, the more you see them. They're pretty good at hiding, so you can see how they live naturally. They're a snack for most of these fish, the size of them, especially the loaches. You'd think the loaches would just hunt them, but they seem to get by and they leave them alone. I do have a couple of predators in here as well. This bad boy's hiding. And there's normally another one over here somewhere, but I'm not gonna be able to find him. But this tank, I'm probably not even gonna give it much of a haircut today. I'll just clean out some of the the floaties, get it all good, vacuum the gravel a little bit. Well, I say gravel versus sand. I just use white sand in my tanks. It's a lot easier to clean than rock. And they're happier with it. There's a couple of corridors in there. They don't mind burying through the sand either. They keep it nice and white. So before I had corridors in there, that used to be a bit of a trouble. We used to get a little bit tingy, but now I've got the corridors. It's, it's perfect. It keeps it nice and white. This tank, the bigger the tank is, the easier they are to manage. Like once you get a massive tank balanced, it looks after itself a lot better. When you got a little tank, it's hard, especially if you start overstocking them. It becomes a lot more labor intensive. So if you got a little tank, little fish. Big tank, you can get bigger fish. Having said that, this is quite a, quite a large tank and uh, I'm running out of room for the fish. I'd say this, this biggest guy, 
he's probably about 125 mil long from front to back, maybe a little bit longer. I haven't taken him out to measure him, but he's getting pretty big. I mean, when I first got him, he was probably about this big, so. Definitely getting big. He's also chasing. Bit of a bully. Just showing him his boss, really. You are supposed to keep him in uh, bigger packs, but I did start off a lot more, and over the time, lost a few. Um, some sneaky jump outs throughout the corners was the main cause. Uh, if I walk past this fish tank at night, I do spook them, and they do go for a jump. Other than that, water quality is always good. They're not trying to escape for freedom. Just, they spook themselves and leave. I would get more, but with the space, and they do seem quite happy. I know you're supposed to keep them in bigger schools, but for the most part, they seem happy. Here's to the four for the little cube. The little cube, it's a good little tank. Mostly I want to do is I take a lot of the top off let a lot more light through and trim up around so it's not so much of a jungle gym, hard to get around. A lot of these plants, this is my hardcore growing tank. Whatever I put in here lives and survives. So if I've got a plant that I wanna make clones of or anything like that, I throw it in here, let it get big, clone it off and populate the rest of the place. So pretty much I'm gonna let some light through, get rid of some of the top stuff, diverse it around. Just open. I think it looks a lot better, a lot more light. And as you can see, still plenty of plants on top. I'll be able to harvest these again soon and add them to elsewhere. The goldfish love to eat them. So it's pretty much just growing free vegetarian food from the goldfish. So this is before. This tank is a shell of its previous glory, but for some reason it is stagnant. So here's a before, I'll give it a clean, see the difference, see what's gonna happen. This is the original tank. Uh, as I was saying, it's sort of been stagnant for a while. It hasn't really been growing much. The plants have just stopped. I added a bunch more this side, took out some there, sort of evened out the load, hopefully. Back to a little bit of a water break, let everything settle a little bit more on the top. I added a couple of well-established, nice green nutrient grass blades in the middle. Hopefully they take off a little bit, but I don't want to overwhelm it because I think what happened last time was I used to come back and it would be from here to here and I used to get buckets and buckets with just cut, cut all out. Just so much grass. The grass used to grow this high, be all curving around. This thing was full. Every month I'd come home, have to cut it all out and start again. So I don't want to get that crazy again. So, but we'll see how it goes. A bit more natural light, we're coming into summer. I cleaned up the driftwood, the shrimp seem to be loving that. Uh, get a little bit more access to the wood for the, the little bristle nose in there as well. They like a little bit of wood for their bellies. But yeah, like hopefully it starts coming back. This used to be the pride and joy tank, this is it's bigger than the little cube. It used to just be self-sufficient, a couple of tablets of food every now and then, and that was it. But these days it's just, it's stalled. Can't work out why. why. I'm not gonna go down the path of CO2 or anything like that. I like just to keep it standard, simple, magic. Hopefully, I didn't have any plecos in there for a while, so hopefully they help with whatever nutrients and stuff I need in the water to get the plants kick-started again. It could have just been a, an off balance. So hopefully with them in there, they'll keep the string algae at bay and they'll help boost out the nutrients that the other plants need. But this is what she looks like. This tank, just all the debris needs to be cleaned out. I have to go through and pick all the debris out. And mostly plants, they somehow trap all the plant bits down here. But this will serve as a bit of a before. And after we'll do an after. I'm still finishing uh, Filling this one back up, nice slow trickle process. But uh, everybody's on the move like they are after a big clean. Essentially the idea is I trimmed out a little bit, 
softened it up a little bit and uh, took out a lot of the floating debris. Other than that, not a lot's changing in this tank. It is what it is. There's a little Cory we couldn't find before. Going on, a little fella. Just chilling. But other than that, standard little tank. You know, this is very easy, low maintenance. All I do is rip out the grass when I need it gone. And this used to have a lot more of that jungle plant that I don't know what it's called, you know, uh, that I'm growing in the two shrimp tanks. That used to be all in here, but I find that sheds its sheds its leaves too much and I'm not a huge fan of that. Just trying to clean it out all the time. These bigger fish like to destroy the plant. So at least with the blades of grass, when they smash that in half, it's easy enough to uh, scoop out.